90% of adults throughout the world consume a caffeinated beverage every single day, making caffeine the most popular drug on the planet. In other words, 90% of the world's population is drinking caffeine on a daily basis to be at their normal level of mental and physical functioning. So the question was, is there a net benefit to daily caffeine consumption? And why are 90% of adult humans consuming caffeine every day? Well, to feel more energized, more focused, to have more both cognitive energy and physical energy. Now, of course, most people are not walking around thinking, oh, caffeine gives me more energy, more focus, etc." Most people are consuming caffeine every single day and are consuming caffeine every single day in order to feel quote unquote normal, to be at their baseline level of cognitive ability and physical energy and so on. In fact, if you look at the data on caffeine consumption, what you'll find is that caffeine actually is a cognitive enhancer. It can improve learning and memory, it can increase physical energy, it can increase mental and physical stamina. But a feature of those studies that's not often discussed, studies of caffeine typically are done by taking chronic caffeine users and then having them abstain from caffeine for some period of time, usually four days to two weeks, in which time they undergo caffeine withdrawal. They do not feel well, they get foggy headed, they have less energy, there's some malaise, sometimes even some mild depression. What I'm saying here is that daily caffeine consumption is not going to lead to improvements in cognitive ability or improvements in physical ability above one's baseline unless you either abstain from caffeine for some period of time, typically four days to two weeks prior, or you are not somebody who typically ingests caffeine. In other words, 90% of the world's population is drinking caffeine on a daily basis to be at their normal level of mental and physical functioning. And just to remind you how it works, it effectively blocks adenosine receptors. Adenosine is a molecule that builds up in your brain and body more and more according to how long you've been awake. It makes you feel sleepy. Caffeine blocks the adenosine receptor and then when it is dislodged from that receptor, whatever adenosine has built up and is around can then bind to the adenosine receptor and makes you feel very sleepy. That's the caffeine crash. So if 90% of the adult population of the planet Earth is consuming caffeine every day, that means 90% of the adult population of planet Earth is blocking their adenosine receptors for some portion of their daily life and then their adenosine is binding to the vacant receptor. Caffeine is a performance enhancing drug, but only when compared to the non-caffeinated state and 90% of the adult population of the world is caffeinated. So adding more caffeine above what you would normally consume is certainly not going to allow you to think better and perform better physically. Here's a useful way to think about caffeine. Most people can pretty well tolerate doses of caffeine anywhere from 100 milligrams to 300 milligrams. For people that want to get more of a true cognitive enhancing and performance enhancing effect from caffeine, again, you're going to have to abstain from caffeine for about four days. For regular caffeine drinkers, that's going to be difficult, right? That is going to lead to headaches, that's going to lead to brain fog, that's going to lead to feelings of malaise. I certainly notice I feel much better when I return to drinking caffeine. The reports here in humans showing that ingesting caffeine can increase dopamine receptors, which will effectively allow you to get more out of the dopamine that you produce. Uh, this is why caffeine has a mood elevating as well as energy elevating effect. Some people just cannot tolerate caffeine. It makes them too jittery, too anxious. They start sweating, they get heart palpitations. It's very hard for these people to build up a tolerance to caffeine that allows them to enjoy it. These are the people that can even feel a fluttering of the heart and a lot of energy lift from decaf coffee. You know, something that you know to me is just a foreign concept, but some people are just that sensitive to caffeine that even the small amounts of caffeine in chocolate or decaf coffee make them feel too alert and they should abstain from caffeine. I don't think they are in any way harming their health by abstaining from caffeine. Then there's the issue of children and adolescents and teenagers and young adults ingesting caffeine. There's been a lot of debate as to whether or not caffeine can cause osteoporosis, whether or not it can leach calcium out of the bones, whether or not it can stunt growth. And yet the developing brain is a very tender and malleable environment. And as somebody who started off his career as a developmental neurobiologist studying developmental brain plasticity and wiring, it does sort of make me cringe to think about children 
younger than the age of say 14 ingesting large amounts of caffeine in any form, soda, coffee, tea, etc. I don't personally like the idea of the young brain being bathed in an adenosine receptor antagonist, which is effectively what caffeine is. You know, as much as possible, one wants the developing brain to develop in a milieu of unencumbered, non-chemically encumbered interactions between neurotransmitters and their receptors, unless of course there's a clinical need for a prescription drug or a supplement or um, some modification of a nutritional program specifically to up or down regulate the dopamine system or up or down regulate the serotonin system. But those are the sorts of decisions that really should be made in close oversight and recommendations by a psychiatrist. So the short answer around daily caffeine consumption in young people, meaning 14 and younger, is avoid it if you can. Have your children avoid caffeine if they can. The occasional bit of caffeine is probably not going to be a problem. The amount of caffeine in small amounts of chocolate, probably not going to be a problem. But caffeine in the form of energy drinks, sodas, coffee, tea for children younger than 14 just seems like a bad idea from everything we understand about brain wiring and the trajectories of brains that develop with a lot of chemical adjustment from uh, other sources like caffeine. Nowadays, a lot of kids are consuming energy drinks and soda, and some of those energy drinks and sodas contain a lot of caffeine, anywhere from 200 to 800 milligrams of caffeine. And nowadays, more sodas and energy drinks contain other things like amino acid precursors to neuromodulators like dopamine. So for instance, a lot of energy drinks now contain L-tyrosine, which is a precursor to dopamine. A lot of them will contain theanine. I've talked about theanine as a supplement that can promote more restful sleep if taken 30 to 60 minutes before sleep. The reason why a lot of energy drinks and sodas, and frankly now coffee brands are including theanine in the coffee or energy drink or soda is because it tends to have a mild anxiety reducing effect and it reduces the jitters that caffeine creates. And so that's actually a trick that these companies are using in order to get people to ingest more caffeine because by including the theanine, it's preventing the kid or adult from feeling too jittery and therefore they can continue to consume that drink without feeling like they're overstimulated. So if I were to take the you know parental neuroscientist uh, adult uh, voice here, I would say, Avoid caffeine intake as much as you can um, until you're about 18 years old, but I'm realistic. I realize that adolescents and teens age, say, you know, 14 or 15 out to 18 and older are going to be consuming caffeine in the form of energy drinks. I think always best to try and get your caffeine from a clean source, a clean source meaning something that contains just coffee or just tea. Um, again, this isn't a knock on energy drinks specifically, but you really have to make sure that whatever energy drink you're going to consume, you know what's in it, uh, you recognize what the different ingredients do, and you recognize the potential of ingesting those ingredients chronically over and over again. Back to the original question about daily caffeine consumption, this person goes on to say that for them, okay, this is their personal experience, after a few weeks of consumption of daily caffeine, the negatives start to outweigh the positive ones. They're getting poor quality sleep, lack of appetite, anxiety, etc. And when they don't consume caffeine, they find it a lot easier to be mindful and their meditation practice is much better, but they're lethargic and less motivated. Okay, so what they're describing are all the classic symptoms of caffeine overuse. A lot of people fall into this category. They drink caffeine every day. They're no longer getting the performance enhancing effect of caffeine. So they're taking it just to be normal or feel like they can focus normally and have normal amounts of energy. But then if they try and come off, they feel worse. Okay, there are a couple ways to do this. You can taper your caffeine intake off over the course of four to seven days, but most people don't have the discipline or don't wanna spend the time doing that. But if you want to, the way you would do that is you would cut it by about 10 or 15% per day. You could do that by volume or you could do that by concentration of coffee, that sort of thing. A simpler way to go about all this that still will allow you to get some of the performance enhancing effects of caffeine and yet experience far less withdrawal would be two things. First of all, just have your amount of caffeine intake for two or three days. So again, that could be by volume or it could be by concentration probably easiest to do by volume. And so instead of drinking an eight ounce coffee in the morning, maybe you do four ounces of regular coffee, four ounces of decaf, or you just have the four ounces of coffee. You do that for three or four days, and then you take perhaps one full day off from caffeine, maybe another full day off. You're going to feel a lot less bad on those two days, having cut your caffeine intake in half. 